Hello, welcome back. Regal Smith here. And today I'm gonna to share with you tips on how to use essential oils in your organic gardening. Specifically, I'm gonna share with you some tips on what you can use to repel insects and pests, how to improve your plant's health, and finally, tips on what you can use on your body as the gardener when we are spending a ton of time out in the sun and the dirt. So one of the things I love about our essential oils is they are dual function. You may have a lot of these already in your cabinet. You might be using them for better sleep, improved digestion, more energy. Well, now we can use these also in our garden. So full disclosure, I am not an expert outdoor gardener by any means. My experience is primarily indoors. I have over a hundred house plants, totally pest free for over two years, loving life. I do hydro gardening inside with 32 plants. I do herbs, tomatoes, lettuces, uh, cucumbers, beans, of things of that nature. So what I'm sharing with you for outdoor tips, I have gone and crowdsourced information from expert outdoor gardeners with years, with decades of gardening experience and essential oil experience. And this is what they shared with me about their best tips for outdoor gardening with essential oils. So first off, I'm gonna share with you an all-purpose plant spray. And this will help to improve the health of your plants and also keep pests away from them naturally. What I use indoors, I'm gonna share, and then how you can make this even better for your outdoor plants. So I've been using this one for years. It works super well, and to me it smells absolutely delicious. Side note, don't worry about writing down all these recipes. I'm gonna give you a ton of recipes. Just sit back, drink your tea, relax, enjoy the video. And after the video, you can head over to the blog in the description and I will have all these recipes and more written up for you. Fancy cheat sheet and more of all the recipes that you can go and try. So don't worry about writing down all these tips. So my indoor houseplant spray is rosemary, clove, and peppermint. Now this combination helps to repel unwanted pests. It helps to support the health of the plant and it to me it smells delicious. So I spray this daily if I think about it or at minimum once a week and it's best used as a preventative as is the all purpose spray that I'll share in a minute for the outdoor gardening. gardening. Kind of like our bodies, prevention is best if possible. So the same goes for our plants. And I use about five to 10 drops and a 16 ounce spray bottle. And this is what I use on all of my indoor plants, including my hydro garden plants. Now, my outdoor gardening friends said they take this combination and they amp it up and they include also tea tree and lavender. So lavender attracts natural pollinators. So this is a great way to pollinate your plants, get the bees coming around. So some of the lavender and then tea tree is a natural antifungal. So it keeps the fungus off those leaves, especially the tomato plants and serves really well in the garden. So my outdoor gardeners do about five to 10 drops of each of these in a 16 ounce spray bottle and spray as needed. If you wanna know more specifics about essential oils for certain pests on the blog, I'll also have a breakdown specifically for essential oils that are effective against spiders aphids, beetles, slugs, mosquitoes, ants, and caterpillars. And the great thing about using essential oils is they do not kill or harm these little animals. They just repel them. So they'll go to the next person. So we're not doing any damage. We're not hurting these little guys because we love nature, but we also want our plants to thrive and grow and feed us. Another thing you can do to repel rodents, so moles, squirrels, rats, mice, is to put a few drops of peppermint oil on a cotton ball and you can put them near their burrows and around your garden to help repel them and keep them out as well. If you have ever heard about companion planting, uh, this is a great way to use your essential oils. If you don't know what companion planting is, you can check out a chart online about companion planting plants. So an example of this would be planting tomatoes with basil plants. Basil and tomatoes have this beautiful symbiotic relationship and it helps enhance the flavor of tomatoes when they're grown together and helps them grow better. Same thing with peppers and basil. They can also enhance one another's growth. Now, if you don't have room to plant basil with your tomatoes or your peppers, you can water them with a few drops of basil oil in your watering can and it will have a similar symbiotic effect. So for me, I grow these tiny dwarf tomato plants 
And uh, I have these in my hydro garden, but I'm going to put a couple dozen of these outside this year in containers. They are supposed to grow in six inch pots outside, so tiny pots, and just kind of be dwarfed. Um, and what I'm gonna do is water them with the basil water because I won't have enough space to grow the basil with them. So that's a great way to use companion planting with your essential oils. Another thing that you can do is to attract pollinators to your garden. I mentioned lavender is a great way to do that, but you can also use a combination of wild orange and lavender in a spray bottle to attract those bees and pollinators to your garden. A side note, if you don't want to attract pollinators to you, don't wear those oils when you're out in the garden because they will follow you around because you smell amazing to them. If you want to repel insects from yourself while you're in the garden or camping or outside in general this year, doTERRA has a TerraShield blend. This is their repel blend. This is specifically designed as a safe insect repellent. You can use this either straight out of the bottle or in a spray bottle. They sell two different versions. They are the same combination, just one is a spray application and one is an oil application. These are already pre-diluted in sesame seed oil and ready to go. You don't have to add anything to these, so you can just spray a little bit right on your exposed skin or your clothing. A little goes a long way. Or you can drop it directly from the oil bottle, just like that. You only need a few drops. There's 250 drops in here, so really this lasts a long time, goes a long way. Safe for children, adults, and even animals. We have a veterinary advisory board with doTERRA with practicing veterinarians, and this has been uh, shown to be safe to use on and around animals as well. It also smells really good. It has sesame seed oil, citronella, lemongrass, thyme, cedarwood, geranium, and peppermint oil. If you forgot to wear your Terra Shield and you got a bug bite, or they just snuck up and got you, sometimes that happens. Add a drop of Purify right on top of that bug bite. It is specifically designed for cleansing. I think of it more as cleaning and odors and putting in my laundry, but honestly, it cleanses that itch right out of those pesky bug bites. So add a drop of lavender, a drop of Purify, and it will help soothe like an anti-itch stick. So you can put it on directly or you could make a roller bottle of it. Equal drops of lavender, purify and roll it on as needed as an itch stick. Um, another thing that you can do in your garden if you want to attract ladybugs, so those are natural little vacuums to eat predatory bugs out of our garden and they're so pretty to look at, right? So you can attract ladybugs with dill essential oil and water, so add a few drops of dill essential oil to a spray bottle and you can spritz around your garden to attract ladybugs. Now doTERRA has dill occasionally as a limited time offering. It's not for sale all the time. So if you see it on sale, grab a bottle. It'll last you a very long time and you can use it to attract the ladybugs to your garden. After we've been gardening outside all day and we have those really dirty hands and they just feel so good, but we want to clean them up, you can make a really nice gardening hand soap. And it's that nice, coarse, gritty hand soap. It's just sugar, some Castile soap, a little bit of almond oil or coconut oil for moisturizing, and then some essential oils like geranium. And you just take a scoop of that, you rub and scrub your hands, get all that grit out from under your nails, and your hands are then gently exfoliated, soften, and smell delicious. Afterwards, you can also give yourself a little nail bed treatment with the Correctex. So this helps with, uh, this is specifically designed more for cuts, scrapes, bruises. It's like an all natural healing ointment you can put on those things. But I like to use it on my nail beds. It has frankincense, helichrysum, cedarwood, tea tree, and lavender. It's in a base of coconut oil. And then of course, in addition to your nails, if you have scrapes or you've just been outside or you got thorns cutting your skin from being in a bush, I don't know, put some of that on and it'll feel soothing to your skin as well. If you were um, outside and your body's just feeling overheated, you can add a couple drops of peppermint to the back of your neck that will help bring your body temperature down. You can also use peppermint as a cool down spray. You can have uh, some peppermint oil in a spray bottle with water and spritz it on the back of your neck or your face. This is a great thing to throw in your beach bag or gardening. 
set up and just spray to help cool the body down. You could use an empty essential oil bottle and just put on a spray top. You can get these little tiny spray tops that fit these from Amazon. And I would put about 10 drops of peppermint in here, fill the rest with water and then spray down. You could throw that even in your purse. Or you can go big, maybe 40 drops in a 16 ounce and bottle, top it with water and you can spritz the whole family all summer long. Now, another thing that I like to use for after sun, I make my own after sun spray. We use this after gardening, long walks, hiking, being at the pool. And this lives in my fridge for the whole summer, sometimes longer. And this is my cool down spray in a recycled kombucha bottle with a spray top. It has aloe vera juice, fractionated coconut oil, lavender, frankincense, and Roman chamomile. So it smells delicious and it's ultra soothing, especially after a long day in the sun. So you can just spray that on. And if you are not a DIY person, doTERRA is releasing a new sun care line on June 1st. So I'm super excited. It's going to have four different products, including an after sun spray. So if you don't wanna make your own, you can purchase one. You'll also have the option for a really good quality mineral-based face sunscreen. And then there are two other versions. I think one is like a stick, a roll-on, and one is a spray version. And they're all mineral-based, non-toxic, extra nourishing sunscreen. So look for those coming June 1st. So I hope you had fun. Drop your gardening questions below, or more importantly, drop what you're gardening. I wanna know what's in your garden this year. If you have more specific questions, I might not be able to answer them about gardening. I will put pretty much everything I know that I shared in this video and more on the blog. So go there first. And like I said, I'm learning with you and I'm super excited to see how my outdoor garden does this year. If you need essential oils from doTERRA, you can get them for 25% below retail. So for wholesale pricing on my Bliss Mama shop page, also linked in my description. And we will see everyone next time. Thank you for your time.